Hey guys, welcome to Jerry's Live. As always, I'm your host, Amy Gardner-Dean, and we are on episode JL110, that's JL110. For those of you playing along at home, we're talking about foreshortening. What is it and how do you portray it? If you're interested in any of the items that we're using to execute the demo today, uh, you can go to our website, www.jerryzartorama.com, in that search box, you're going to type in JL110 and hit enter. It'll bring up that entire cart of the items that I'm going to be using today to do the demo. Um, now, I, I think if Will is okay with this, <laughs> Will's a model for one of the things, not not physically. He was actually willing to come on physically. I should have just said yes and made you Stay hold your hand out for, for uh, 60 minutes. But... Um, Will was gracious enough to be our model for just kind of looking at some foreshortening of the arms and hand. Um, if you're fine with me posting the picture afterwards yeah. in the Jerry's Live group, then you can draw Will too, which I know probably Tina is going to be very excited about that since you've had multiple drawings from episodes yeah. of you from, from Tina. But, um, but if you're not familiar with our Jerry's Live group, it's a Facebook group. Just, just like Jerry's Live, it's Jerry's Live. You go to groups, you search Jerry's Live. It'll give you a question when you want to join. You do have to answer that. Otherwise, we just apparently think you're a robot. And uh, and then that will put you in the group. It's a great group. How many do we have now, guys, in the group? Ladies? Amanda's checking. Amanda's okay. checking. Uh, it, it was, what, over 2,000 the last yeah, time? Yeah, 29.50. Almost three. Okay, so almost 3,000 people are in the group. People that watch the show, people post artwork all the time, people ask for uh, suggestions, people ask for uh, just critiques, people just show really awesome, cool artwork that the rest of us get all excited about. So it's a great community. A lot of people have become friends outside of that. I've noticed that some of those people are actually Facebook friends with each other now, so it's kind of a fun... It's a fun, really cool, exciting group. So, after episodes where we do a demo, where we're doing drawing or something like that, I'm posting those pictures that we use. So if you want to try your hand at some homework, which I highly suggest, then you can download the pictures and print them out yourself. So after this episode, I will put the pictures up uh, by noon tomorrow of whatever we got that we're gonna draw from today. So, um, and one of them will be what? So anyway, so that's the Jerry's Live group. Almost 3,000 people. Let's let's bump it to 3,000. Why not? Right? That'd be really cool. So um, so anyway, we're talking about foreshortening today. And it, with drawing, this still translates to painting or anything like that that you're doing, whether you're doing um, animals, whether you're doing portraits. I mean, it's basically kind of like perspective, but for figures, right? For figurative work. Um, it's whenever you don't have somebody just standing there straight in front of you with their hands down, when their hands are out this way, or you know, you've got uh, a lot of you in the group, it looks like, are starting to take pet portrait commissions. When you, the person, you know, the pet's long gone and passed, they give you this picture where the dog's laying there with its legs out straight towards you, and then they want the whole body because they loved, you know, Fluffy or Biscuit or whatever its name was. And, and then suddenly you've got the the uh, magic talent of you need to be able to make those legs look right and not just like some weird sort of little plastic things sitting there. So we're talking about foreshortening and how do you kind of see that and translate it because it's something that uh, in having, I uh, used to teach when I taught K through five, you know, kids always want to show it where it either looks like the figure is laying down or standing up like a cardboard cutout. Um, even if it's something where they can kind of see down over the legs, they tend to elevate their viewpoint um, in some sort of odd way. I'm not, I'm not sure what makes that happen, to, to be able to show it like it would be standing when it's actually not. So these are going to be the techniques that we're going to use to kind of talk about. We did when we, I think when we drew the animals, right? Uh, we talked about kind of how you see things in shapes. We did breaking it down into shapes with the last drawing episode. So we're using those same skills that we talked about for breaking it down into shapes, and we're gonna apply them to foreshortening. All we're doing is drawing the shapes. 
we're, we're trying to not look at it as, okay, this is going to be a lick or, okay, this is going to be a hand. These are going to be fingers. We're looking at it as in what shapes make that up so that we're seeing it as that entire unit. Um, when you simplify it that way, it becomes less scary. It becomes, uh, I think, easier to kind of translate from your eyes to your hand. So we're going to do that. Now, to make it easier for you guys to see on camera, I'm going to work with a darker pencil than I normally would. Um, I'm not gonna be very fastidious about what, when I draw, I draw with a very light pencil first to do the underdrawing. Sometimes I don't even go back and clean up the lines because I like that little bit of a rough look. And just from drawing as much as I have, I, I don't always have a lot of extra lines over it. So. So we will, if, if need be, if it makes it hard to see, if I do, you know, try to kind of find the form and make a little bit of a mess, we'll try to clean that up for you with the handy dandy Marie's eraser or the Vanish one. But, um, so I'll, I'll be using, this would not be what I would normally do my sketch with probably um, an H or HB, maybe a B pencil. So, but just for the sake of making it easier, um, now we're using the Jerry's Colossal Sketchbook. I really like this paper. Oh, and I'm finding all the things that we did last time in there. I saw the elephant. Um, Katie, okay, you think the animal will be less kind of hard at first and, and then go to Will? Or should we just start off with Will? I think just go for Will. Go with Will. Okay. They practice with hands before, so I think you That's true. Good. Good point. Okay. So I, I took some different pictures of Will. And she's going to show us from the above. So that you can see from different angles, these shapes are going to look very different. If you can pop that overhead on. Um, first, first, I had him make a fist. So that we could kind of see from different angles what this really looks like. Okay. So we've got four different angles here. Put this down over his head. Not, not, not because we don't adore Will, but we need to see his arms right now. Okay, so let's very quickly just kind of talk about the shape so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Now first, we're looking at it with his fist closed. We'll actually draw it with his, with his hand open so that it'll kind of help you see the shapes. But first, we're going to look at kind of how I want you to formulate this. Now, it's funny because every, anytime anybody turns this and looks at it straight on, we're used to kind of seeing people more from the side. Don't you think people look a little thinner and stranger when you look at start really looking at foreshortening, Katie? Yes. Well, was it, were you turning to look straight? That's how you were just like, you skinny in pictures. Yes. Oh, yeah. True. Pack a hit. That's right. Okay, so if we're looking at it here, in oppo opposed to here, you can see we've got a shape like this. I'm just going to go over this because we're using the a different image. But so you can see it's almost like a teardrop shape, right? Where it comes down. Where if we look at this straight on, we've got kind of more almost like of a diamond shape, if that makes sense, for his forearm, okay? We're drawing a forearm, but we need to draw it as an actual shape. Can I your color so that you can see on that black? Uh, sure, that would be fine. Actually, if it's something like a pink or something that's bright where we can see it over the white, that would be fantastic. Um, you can see from this angle, that changes it. It makes almost this in reverse. Okay, and you notice that the hand is kind of different shapes each time, right? Lavender, excellent, all right. So, you guys can see this easier. Can you push it up just like an inch or two? Yes. It's, it's hard for me to see with my reading glasses. I can't see that monitor up there. <laughs> All right. Is that better? Yeah, you were in frame. You were okay. Just All right. The edge. All right. So, see how we're finding kind of that form? It's kind of this very kind of organic uh, shape. So you really want to pay attention to kind of where those angles are. You can use that to rough it in when you're actually drawing it rather than going along and kind of tick, tick, ticking, which we've talked about we don't want to do, right? Those little kind of scritchy, scratchy little shapes. Better to draw this very lightly with a very light pencil and kind of get these 
shapes in here I always line line the hand up like that just make it see how if I do this I've got the wrist there I've got those knuckles it comes across kind of like this okay that is a very rough then his arms going straight back you can't see back behind his hand but the arm goes straight back into the shoulder right back there okay so if I do that and just block that in first, all I'm looking at when I get to this point is this shape here. What is the proportion of this shape to this shape here, okay? Ignore the rest of it for right now. If you make this shape look kind of in comparison to that shape, how it is on your picture. And you know, while you're learning, it's fine to print multiple pictures off. Do this over a picture first then draw it to the side using the one that's clean that you haven't drawn on. Nothing wrong with that. In fact, sometimes it's just easier for people when they're learning to kind of see that. Then once you've got that, then look at this shape in comparison to this shape. If you need to drop a line to see kind of straight, you know, what, what this is in comparison to this, here is almost as wide as here, right? If you drop that line straight down, the width of his knuckles is almost pretty much the same as the width here, okay? Slightly less. But that'll kind of help you see what's going on there. Then once you get that and you're happy with that, then you can round that bottom out. Then you can start rounding these out. Then you can look at each of these kind of where his, the folds of his finger are. Bring that in following this line. These are parallel lines, okay? So they're they're going to run along that same plane. Bring that in. Only focus on that for right now. Only focus on that for right now. Do it as just a little kind of a line tick. Don't draw each of the fingers. All you're looking for is just those rough shapes put together. Okay? That's pretty easy to see on that mm -hmm. with that lavender. Yeah, okay? Then look at it and see where those knuckles are. You can always leave a little tick. That'll kind of help you know where that's at. The hand shape wrist is right here but we really don't see the wrist in the pictures you don't see kind of in how this looks the boning there because he's it's it's very kind of flowing how it comes down he doesn't have really huge wrist bones where they stick way out okay so you want to make it look like how it actually looks you don't want to make it look like you want it to look okay you're just translating these shapes all right so that goes back to that shoulder right there. If you want, just leave the hand like that. If you want, you can go ahead and make your lines for where his body is going to be. You know, do your little head shape, do your jaw shape, lines across. Drop that line for the arm. You've got a rough blocked in neck, chest. Okay, shape. All right, when you're learning for shortening, it's okay to even stop here if you want. Just only view it as shapes, practice it as shapes over and over. So many people try to just like jump right into a finished drawing. And we've talked about that with paintings. We talked about it when we were talking about our, um, the, what was the word? We did the, those little thumbnails last week, right? And we were doing that as far as composition it's okay to do thumbnail sketches of stuff. You don't have to make this in a complete rectangle. You can just do in a sketchbook this and then turn and do it that way. Get used to how that, you know, the flatness of his chest is turned this angle. Then it's turned even further this angle. You know, we can, we can break this down on these. Let's take the pointing pictures out from under it so we don't damage them so we can get to those in a minute. All right, so we've got that one. Let's put this over to the side. See how we've got that kind of similar shape? We've got a line, a line, these are parallel, then that kind of juts back in. Just block that in to those edges, okay? His knuckles come here. This is kind of the edge of that hand. It's hard to see with that there. You do those lines, those change because we're seeing this from a different angle. We're looking 
at this from a different angle here than what we were here. So you're going to want to pay attention to where those lines come in relationship to that edge. Okay, we're seeing more of his arm because we're turned. So the elbow is here, so that bone is gonna come right back here, right through the middle there, okay? Down to where his elbow is, where these other two bones connect. So you're gonna wanna make sure you keep this center in mind when you do your outside lines, because what people do is get so worried about these lines, somehow the arm looks like it's over here, somehow the arm looks like it's over here. Make sure you've got that dead center where that's going to come down before you put these in. So it just doesn't look like somebody's taken an arm off somebody and stuck it on poor Will with his extra arm. We know how when people do that, you'll see. Yeah. And it's just like, that does not look like it, it goes into the shoulder right. Okay? So then you got this one. What would we do first? Find that shape. Look at that in relation to this. It looks like about one, two, about a little over two and a half. So bring that line down, bring that line, then you can curve it. I did that because I know this is my dead center right there, going back up to that shoulder, okay? Shoulders there, back, then you come back in do those fingers. Now these, the way he's got this and the angle we're seeing it at, these don't all necessarily run parallel. So you really want to pay attention to, you know, this finger looks wider than these because of how he's gripping that where you can't see the, the front of his hand. Okay. All right. Does that make sense? How we're kind of, that's for all the people doing the drinking game. Does that make sense? <laughs> do you all understand? Okay. Same with this. This, we're looking down over. I had him lower his hand. So you're going to just look for those lines. Knuckle, wrist is right here. We're looking down, so the wrist has dropped down where we were looking at it more from the side here. So these are where the wrist bones are. So I'm gonna put that there as kind of my frame of reference. His elbow is right here. This comes straight up that middle for his arm right by where his outer hand is. So I'm going to leave that. This comes at an angle. This makes a V shape. We see those muscles kind of curving around, okay? Bring that up to that. Fingers don't run parallel, again, so pay attention to that. And then you've got the knuckles you can deal with. A great way when you're doing this, just to do it really basic, you can always use shading to make the planes of this, okay? That will help kind of make that more three-dimensional as you do it. His bicep is right there, so we could take that kind of shade across, all right? So, yes, it looks a little cartoon-like. You know what? That's what your underdrawing is, is supposed to be for. Your underdrawing is to find that form to then progress to a more finished drawing from there. All right, so let's take one of these crazy pictures of him pointing. It looks like you're the kid in gym class that gets picked last with these, aren't you? I love, I, this one's great, because I love the shapes here. That's like very serious foreshortening. Mm -hmm. That's my favorite. Like you wanna do that? Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, let's look at these other ones, because- Number one. We'll, we'll, we'll draw this, but let's look at these with that with that uh, purple again, okay? Um, or do we want to do yellow? Will it be a little easier to see? Well, yeah. Do the we'll purple. St stick with the purple, okay. Yeah, All right. You can see it pretty good. Yeah. Okay. All right, so his arm is coming out. The way that that bone is coming, we can't see where the shoulder is connecting. So now we have to take a leap of faith. Sometimes... What? Sometimes foreshortening is all about a leap of faith. You're, you're drawing something that you cannot see that's not there, okay? So what we're going to do is need to look at this as shapes and how they relate to each other and hope that we're getting them balanced in comparison to make this look believably rooted into his shoulder, okay? So he's, we've got the front line here, right? It goes up to that back shoulder. 
there's his kind of neck and shoulder there. So where we would first find kind of what we can for that plum of that arm. It comes out, look how that comes out right by his finger, right? Then the knuckles. Now he's got this finger extended, so in extending that finger, it kind of drops that knuckle down a little bit. So we would want to find this line first. That goes across like that, see? Almost to this index finger knuckle. Here's his wrist. Now at this angle, you can see the bones of his wrist. See that right there? And here is the heel of his hand, this meaty part right here, okay? Right there. So you want to have that on there. Bring that down for that finger, kind of that edge of his hand there. You can drop these very quick kind of little tick lines for here. See how all of a sudden this has kind of defined where those are? This is, drawing these lines is gonna be the easiest way to get this because what happens is people want to round this out. For some reason, just because it's an organic shape, because it's a person we're drawing, we always wanna round them out. And it looks like these weird kind of half-cooked spaghetti noodles that are just kind of like, or a cartoon character, right? Like the, the hands on the Simpsons, right? You never see those hard planes on the, on the angles. So you want to actually draw with those kind of little tick marks what angles those are at because those will help you find where the bones are going in his hand, okay? See how that dropped that down a little bit more? Then, especially here, when you've got really dramatic foreshortening like that, you need to draw this as a shape. This is almost like a triangular shape. If that extended, that would be doing that, right? To get this meat in here to make it make sense. Then you got this angle here. You got that angle there. The angle there for the front of that hand. And this right here is the tip of his finger, right? So just kind of put a little line where that shadow is. Then down here, we've got his thumb is coming out. This looks very strange now that we've got the lines over it. It's hard to see, but this back here is this part of his hand, okay? This joint. The thumb is made up of three joints, just like, you know, you've got one bone, one bone, and then the, the fingertip. You've got one bone to here, another bone, and then the fingertip. So that's that first joint there. Then here's this then you've got that line coming like that to come here, okay? And again, that fingertip is right there, all right? Take stuff and mark it up, totally easy to do. Now let's look back at his forearm here. Here's his elbow, so you're gonna wanna make that curve, just so you know kind of where that bone stops. But look at how the foreshortening makes this almost like a vase shape, see that? got almost like an egg oval if you were going right there in that shape so make sure that you make that nice and that it ends with the meat just a little beyond that elbow and then with this how you circular just, it is hmm? how circular it is you wouldn't think of it is forearm being circular but the way it's it's done it's almost like a like if you took a pringles can and turned it towards you right mm -hmm. think of it in terms of cylinders of of egg shapes of just these, you know, of almost kind of like Lincoln logs, right? Just if you break it down into those type of shapes and you only look at it in this little area of this shape in relation to this shape in relation to this shape, then you're not gonna get so overwhelmed with the rest of this. These tick marks mean that you're not putting so much effort into this has to be, you know, it, it doesn't become precious. So you're willing to actually erase it. Okay, it's when you start getting in here and oh my gosh, I'm already starting to shade, but I didn't even bother to draw in the forearm that you're like, that doesn't look right, but I am not going back and erasing this because I just spent 20 minutes on shading, right? Okay. Hey, hey, hey. Yes, yes, yes. Can you switch to like a bright orange or green for this one? Something that's a little more different from the Oh, uh, yes. They're saying it's blending a little bit. Okay, the that's fine. The We're gonna do this one really quick, okay? I'm not gonna talk about, you're just gonna watch the lines going down because then we wanna get to this one of Will uh, uh, with the pointing straight forward. 
okay? Here, again, this is kind of the armpit where that bone's gonna be coming directly from. Fingertip, look at this. Look how it's almost like a, a, a plumb line, right? All the way up that middle. Does that make sense? Can you guys see that? I don't wanna draw over it too dark because maybe we'll, let's do this one. Yeah. See that plumb line? Well, Goes one. Straight up to the tip. Okay, so but then let's use the red so we can see that. Is this red, do we need a little bit lighter one? Or a little bit be? lighter, yeah. Okay. That teal you just did worked really well. Yes, well, well I want to keep, keep that. Um, yeah, that might be good. How about those? Yeah. Okay. Oh, will well, that be too hard to see on the color of his hand? I think it'll be okay. Or maybe like lime green? Lime green. Lime or something? The one that ends that. All right. All right, so this becomes more difficult because here we've got this at a very awkward angle so you break it down into lines anywhere you see a plane draw that line draw that line draw that line draw that line you can round it out later okay draw the line draw the line draw the line same with the thumb there's a line there's a line 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 that makes sense this is his knuckle here you can always do these and like how we did that just put little ticks for where those spots are going to be always reference your own hand just like the the uh other student when i was in college who drew six fingers or five fingers and a thumb right if you're counting and looking and looking at your own hand for reference you won't you won't miss an actual bend in here or i saw a, draw, a hand drawing somebody did the other day too many joints four bones in the finger instead of yep because they just just didn't do the check they just saw the lines and started you know copying the patterns okay here are his knuckles coming back line 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 for that outer edge he's really got them kind of crazy here so we're gonna do that and drop that kind of through the middle of those see the middle of those line 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 okay then this comes back this is a really awkward shape we've totally lost the elbow so we can't see where that's at so we have to just go on kind of these sides of his arm as they come back okay and then here we've got kind of the bulging bicep so we've got that is kind of a nice little rounded shape okay does that make sense all right so let's let's give this a whirl shall we all right uh do we want this on i guess it's probably easier if this is on this side with me being left-handed and we'll draw it here does that makes don't you think yeah you know whatever works for you i think that'll, that'll work okay all right, so let's see. I hate to go super dark, but we're going to probably have to so you guys can see. All right, so we've got his hand here. This is really large in comparison to the rest of his arm, right? But see, we're losing some of the middle of that. So if I do this, that doesn't make sense as to where that would come into the shoulder. So I'm just gonna draw a line in where I see this disappearing for his elbow. Even this, I mean, I, probably the bone would be a little bit higher just because of how that is. But I'm gonna do that for me to, to an angle like this. Do this so it's easier for people to see. Okay. So about like that, maybe a little higher. All right, now, hand we've got these angles like this so i'm going to take this is going to be where kind of that fingertip is going to go this is this line this is going to come over here if this is like this this is going to come like that does this help if i do this for people to see mm -hmm. okay so if that's there i'm going to make this come right there okay then there's going to be this so i can kind of plan where that finger is going to go here then this is going to drop drops to there 
and then drops down. So there, down, okay? Then we've got one here, which that's pretty close to that. So I'm just gonna make this drop a little lower here for those knuckles. Then this comes across like that. Actually, it's a little bit more angle like that. And then I'm gonna slide this back so I can see his thumb because that comes out at an angle like that, almost from here across. So I'm dropping that over, then this comes down, a little steeper. That comes almost across where the bottom of that's gonna be. So that'll come down more, that'll come down more. This to here kind of cuts off some of that. So this to here, put his thumb about like that. Okay, now we're gonna kind of start looking at the relationships and that as soon as I kind of figure the arms out. That's hard to see with that there for me. All right, so this comes down. Now with this, I'm gonna make this kind of an organic shape. In comparison to this, okay, then- Can you go a little darker? I'm going to in a minute okay. as we get further into it. If I make it too dark now, I'm getting, it's going to be hard for me to see okay. to go back. So, yeah, that's that should be good enough because it's it's I don't want it to be too dark. Okay. Is he trying to brighten us up on your screen? Sometimes that helps just a little bit. Okay, this is here. Okay, so I don't know if you guys could hear her say, turn the brightness up on your screen. That that might help some. Okay. So we've got the elbow here, got this kind of meat of the arm here that would be kind of there by his sleeve. And then his head is up here, obviously. Okay. And then shoulder is gonna come across to into here. We're not worried about that. We're really mostly worried about what we got going on with the hands here, okay? All right. So, do I like this in comparison to this? I don't have this up as high as I want that. This is a pretty big shape in comparison to how I have my hand. So I'm gonna refine it from there. This is gonna need to come out about here, okay? And this is gonna come up some. So my perspective of this is too small in comparison to this. So that's why I want those lines to be drawn light. I don't wanna just be like, eh, okay, that's fine. Let's leave it. No, don't leave it. That's why we practice this. This comes up higher. Okay, see how this is like a shape like this? I wanna draw on it with the thing, but then I won't be able to see it. So I don't wanna draw on it with oil pastel. All right, so now we're gonna break it down from here. Do you want me to use a little bit darker one to, would that be helpful, Amanda? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, now, let me find the fingers here real quick first with this, this is already a 6B. All right, here's this knuckle. This drops, but it does a really strange shape and then that comes out. So I'm gonna drop that at that knuckle there's kind of a strange shape that juts out, then drops back down to that thumb, okay? Other knuckle, coming down. Coming down, that's the meat of the hand, so this is coming down. Okay, so we've got, this is gonna be our index finger, right? Middle finger, ring finger, pinky. It's gonna come from here, okay? Does that make sense? This is hard to, it's easier if I'm talking to somebody directly. You can just say, yes, yes, yeah, that makes yeah. sense. And I'll be like, oh yeah, the viewers understand it. Okay? They're so, agreeing with you, you just can't hear them. Okay, yeah, okay, there we go. All right, so then we've got this down here. It's gonna come down. 
this is only this part right here. That's all you're seeing. You're not seeing the tip. So that's going to come like that, more square. Comes at an angle like that. Okay, here's his joint there. This joint is up here. See these? It's like this shape. Okay, I'm going to do this so you can kind of see. And see right here. Okay, is that a little clearer? There, is that somewhat easier to see? I'm trying to kind of darken it some. That helps, yeah. Okay, all right, so he's got the joints here. All right, this, it's turned back enough where you really can't see much of that. This falls away, so it's really hard to see because it's the same gray value as his arm. So I'm gonna do what I can to get that in there. All right. Now, meat of his hand is coming up right here. Now, knuckles, in looking at this, I have this a little low in comparison to the rest of this. Okay, so you've got that knuckle that comes up right there. Make sure, if you need to, drop that line down that center, okay? Just a very light line. You can always go back and erase some of this if you need to. All right, so this is going to come up. This is very flat in between his knuckles. This is very square right here. So come down and do that. It's really getting foggy up here and hard to see. Does that help? If I, should I take some of these lines out to make it easier for you guys to see, or do they want the lines left? In the middle of the fingers. Do you want me to take some of these out to make it easier to see? Let's see what they say. Oh, it doesn't look as bad up on the monitor though. Yeah, let's see what they say. While you wait for responses, can okay. you talk about what you would do if this was a live model? Okay, with a live model, foreshortening is very difficult because for them to stand there like this, <laughs> yeah. for you to do it, in, in having been a figure model in college, it is not easy. You no. can't this is a quick pose okay it's hard to sit still yes this is a quick long. pose somebody might be able to hold this for three or four minutes for gesture drawing this is not something they're going to be able to hold for longer than that and even if you go okay you did it five minutes take a break they are never going to be able to go back to that exact same spot and and for you to start like this and by the time three minutes are up it's going to have moved down or they're going to have dropped a shoulder mm -hmm or whatever, even the most athletic figure model cannot hold a pose like that. So this is where smartphones are wonderful. Yeah. If you want a pose like this, take a couple close-ups to get a nice close-up of the arm, then step back. You know, they can hold it for two minutes while you get some good photos. And luckily with autofocus, so much easier, yeah. Okay, so this is the top of his finger. And Will was gonna stand here, which I, I really thought about just making him do so that he'd be like, oh. The Facebook consensus is to keep the lines. Okay, that's fine. Same on YouTube. All right, we'll keep them. All right, so that's that knuckle here, okay? Then we're gonna get that fingertip. This is foreshortened enough where this is that fingertip coming right at us right there. We can't see the nail, so we're just gonna kinda bring that across. And we see up under here which is hard to see because of the gray values for it so i'm gonna bring this around that's like that for that fingertip Ugh. so hard to see okay so this comes here for this is the meat of his hand right here okay where those bones come out of so that is going to, I mean, backwards, I'm using the wrong hand, but so that is going to come up from there. There's this little 
kind of skin in between. Okay, and then there's kind of that area there. And this is, okay. Go down a little bit right there. All right, then we've got this coming down here. That's this part of his hand here, okay? So that's coming down. That bone this comes up to his thumb, which comes around like this. I've got that too long, so we're gonna scrub that out. And this is why I don't like using heavy racer marks or lines. Okay, so thumb comes back. What's funny? Mm -mm. What's funny? Um, I was looking at comments and uh -huh. it was when you were saying leave or keep the line. Uh-huh. And somebody just said leave and I thought they were just telling somebody <laughs> See to leave and I was like, take Dang. off. <laughs> Harsh. And then I realized what was happening. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> That's funny. All right. So That's too high. This is right where the that part is. All right, so I'm gonna do this real quick to just try to drop that back so you guys can maybe see a little bit more where this is coming up. This is all in the shadow, obviously. This is that thumb though where it's turning back. All right. So now that we've got all of this in here, and then this is gonna be kind of that one joint. Does that make sense? Let's get that arm. So we've got that going here. This comes off of here. There's a nice drop, and I can kind of see a little bit of elbow here. This is almost flat here, where it rounds out. Will has a very nice forearm. I have this weird thing about forearms. You do. On models, really and, and do. I don't know what it is. And this is just a very nice, Will, beautiful forearm. He's probably watching in there, and now he's going, oh God. He's blushing right now. Should be looking at my forearms every time. I'm just gonna do this to him from now on. <laughs> All right. So then we've got this going up into kind of the armpit. Okay, and then that comes around. Then his t-shirt. Okay. Shoulder. Do we look like we're pointing at somebody? This is, mm -hmm. Some shadowing here would help kind of drop that forearm off. It feels very accusatory. You! No. You're last to get picked for gym class. Oh, Will says the heart eyes emoji. Aww. Aww. <laughs> okay. So there's foreshortening with that. Now, what time do we have? Do we want to do a very quick animal scribble? We got time, right? Yeah, it's done. Should we try that? We got about 15 minutes left. Is everybody good with that, or would, are we just done? We're done. Peace we're out. Done. No. <laughs> nah, we're not going to do that to you. Okay. If this was a, a real one, you would still keep refining and refining. Oh, no. This is, and, and I would already be having a stroke about how dark these lines are. This would make me so freaked out. I don't get dark until like the last. I'll go around and just do some where, where you've got these tighter areas like this. This would be where I would have in those joint areas where I would have my deeper things to help really push that volume back. I would never have any lines this dark on, on a drawing that I was doing. That just is stressful for me to look at. That's why we're switching to something else. <laughs> well, it's, it's just, it's just that, that is dark being a lefty. You can already see where I've smeared it everywhere. My hands all nasty from no leaning bridge. Amy, it's not a real episode if your hands are dirty. Sure. No, I just, I don't like that. Okay. So we've got two different views and, and we can take a very quick poll. Okay. We've got Ripley. I've got notes on that one. We've got the baby Ripley who's under there who might be kind of hard to see. 
And then we've got Mr. Cisco. I feel like Ripley is a better example of course shortening than Okay. Cisco. Yeah. Also, I just love Rips. Yeah, you love the bippy. Love the bippy. The baby. The Look at that big old baby. Well, this is when she first came. She's now fills up that entire en entire cushion and we is hanging have out. Used the pup cup picture. Oh my gosh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have a spoiled dog. She gets Starbucks. But they give it to them, so alright. So if we put this over here like that, is that good? Alright, so I'm gonna do this super fast but i guess i'll try to do another dart let me sharpen this pencil so i can see the point here all right do we want to very quickly i've got the two pictures i can do the uh line with the uh we'll do that real quick we'll do the oil pastel line yeah that really helps people yeah i think your so eye too. kind of to see the uh, i agree all right so we'll take this and we'll do it with that first Okay, uh, which one showed up better? I think it, sh it needs to be something. That teal one showed up really good on. The teal? Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay, so with a Great Dane head at this angle, it looks very flat. She looks very flat faced, which she isn't, but that's what foreshortening does. So what I would do first, if I was doing an animal, this is a really nice kind of square boxy shape across her eyes and then down like this. This was, would be what I do first, because this part here, I only know because I, I know the breed. These are just ears. This isn't part of the skull. It's just how, her, but it's, it's hard to explain, okay? So here is the bottom of her little jaw. This is the side of the head, the skull going up. That's the top of the head, okay? The way this is foreshortened, her eyes are very close to the top of her head because her head's back. So I would draw that line across the eyes, okay? With the nostrils, I would draw a line across the top of the nose. I would draw it across the nostrils to get those lined up. I would draw it across that bottom part of that uh, of where the nose goes. Then I would put the nose in to make sure that it matched up with where the eyes were, okay? Then I would do what the lips are there Okay, then I would come down, to, well, I'd probably do this, ears, and just make that shape. Okay, that's tape, ignore that. All right, so then I would come down here, neck, this is, goes back to the shoulders, that's almost a circle, okay, a little, little oblong but I would put that in. Then I would put in kind of where that comes in the back. You can't see any of the back legs. They're back tucked in behind her. Then I would drop a line to that foot. This is the forearm. I would drop a line down the center of that. Put in my little angles for how this comes out from under the body. Then I would put in where this is for that kind of the bones of her this would be our palm okay these are the the phalanges these big long giant things so I would put that in like that since that's kind of a see how that's a, a little bit of a almost looks like our hand right that's what your hand, just saying in the comments. if your hand was that way that's it's a, it's that's why it's that's why if you want to draw animals or things like that it's really helpful to know the skeletal structure uh, because then these shapes suddenly make sense and then it'll be that much easier to help with foreshortening. So there, there. That's kind of like a scoopy curve, scoopy curve. Toes are like hands. You want those angles. There's the pads. Comes down, comes down. There's that pad. This is another kind of in between those little kind of fingers as it were okay can everybody see that structure there's this there's this you can go back and further refine it to kind of breastbone across here these are shoulders okay all right does that make sense drink <laughs> i'm gonna just start saying that instead of drink does that make sense drink okay all right, are we ready? 
good thing is everybody here, I'd, I'd be losing it by the end of the Yeah. <laughs> is everybody, can, okay, that's good. So see the two pictures next to each other? See how that kind of helps you sort that form out, right? I like that. Okay. All right. So let's do this now of the ripple dipple. All right. So I, like I said, start with the head. Eyes. This is the top. Eyes. Nose. Center of the nostril. Under the nostril. Okay. Nose is here. <coughs> uh, shine on it. I can't see it. Anymore. Oh, here we go. So at least on YouTube's end, everybody's saying how much they are loving and appreciating this episode. And they love you, and they love this show, and they're just giving all the love today. And you know why? It's because they're playing the drinking game. <laughs> <laughs> I just love you. You know, not a single person has mentioned the drinking, ironically. That's funny. <laughs> it's all about the four short names. Okay, well, that's good. All right. Okay, so see how we've got, looks like a little cartoon Scooby-Doo, doesn't it? All right. So then we're going to come down to here, that kind of through shape, right? Uh, the collar goes right there, just in case you're wondering what the heck that is. All right, shoulder, come back to that leg. Got that little scoopy line there. Now with this. This leg comes up. We've got that little line. It's not like I ever draw my dogs, right? You I never tell. Never. Okay, toe. Okay. All right. Back goes up to about under that nose. All right. So do we want to refine it from there? We how much time do we have? We got a few minutes. Okay. Yeah, you got a few minutes. All right. So this comes from here. See, these are good to do because the quicker you do these where you get used to these shapes, you could be doing this in ink pen really lightly and get a nice little drawing. Get the little buckle. All right, uh, let me just switch to something a little darker and start refining the face, or can you see okay with this, do you think? Darker. Okay. Where is the darker one? Tender. Okay, so we got the nose up here. With this, I would go in and start kind of this mask because the mask you can get a lot of shading in and really start to see. We're blacking the little eyes. Okay, because this is definitely a shape that you can see. Right? Comes down like that. Nose. With this, it's it's people always want to draw the nose exactly how they look at it without looking at it. Look at those shapes because of how this goes back, it's not gonna translate if you don't do it as the shapes themselves. Okay, this 
rounds out and you can't see a lot of this because it's in shadow. Okay, so we're just gonna kind of Now with something like this, if I really wanted it to be uh, a lot more, less shady, I would lighten this picture some and do a gray value, just grays of it in black and white so I could see what the values are. And this is, her nostrils are over to the side with this kind of foreshortening. not going to draw her puppy zits. <laughs> She's got a complex about it. Okay. All right. So up here, her little ear base comes out like that. You actually can't see it there. It comes like that and comes down to her side neck. We ever had a Dane named Scooby-Doo? I have not. We did take Elvis once and we painted, af after he had to be retired from showing, we painted a Scooby patch on him because you know how Scooby-Doo oh. has that big brown <laughs> patch which fawns do not have. And um, the kids went as uh, Shaggy and Fred with Elvis. you're retreating, Elvis. how cute. Yep. And Elvis thought he was big stuff because he got to go trick or treating. And thankfully he was retired because it took forever to get it off of him. <laughs> okay. Okay, so the tape is up here. That's just gonna be left as these kind of weird little, she's got a little thing across there. No, she wasn't just cropped. She's, it's just as they're teething, their little cartilage is soft, so it doesn't wanna stand. So you gotta make sure that it stands. Do you ever use an easel to draw, or do you prefer to draw on flat surfaces? I do not like using an easel to draw um, because it makes my arm hurt from doing this. If I was doing life sketching, yes, I probably would or would use a, uh, a um, horse to sit on, those benches, but I do not. A drawing horse. <laughs> <laughs> Amanda was all like, I was like, well, that's a way to do it, I guess. Bring me to the stable. <laughs> Well, someone did just say she was the fastest pencil in the way. I know. She said she sat on a horse, and I was like, eh. No, although once I did have my saddle in the studio, I would sit on my, I put my saddle on a stool and sit on that, because that was pretty comfy. All right, so um, let me sharpen this, because the, it's so soft, it's wearing very quickly. Now, some of this around here, if I took the time to block this in better, would become much narrower looking because it doesn't have all the shading in her little mask and stuff. So it's, and I'm looking up at the monitor, it looks kind of fat to me, but it's because those shadows aren't in there. All right, so when they're little like this, you see all these little- That one line just made all the difference. Bones, what? That one Here? line on the side of her face. Oh yeah. Okay, now this comes down and goes around like that. And this kind of comes in. See, there's this little bit right there. Little scoopy bit. Drink? No. I almost said, is this making sense? But I thought the drink thing would be more fun. All right. <coughs> okay, so I put this up too high. So this would actually come down here more from what I, I had the line up way too high. So this is gonna be this toe where it comes down. Always pay attention if you draw animals with nails, always pay attention because if you put those in the wrong place, even though people don't know why it looks wrong, it's going to look wrong. Can you push it up just a little bit? Where? The 
the same with the pad. That's going to look weird if you don't leave the room for that pad. Don't draw what you know. Draw what you see. To me, it happens drawing in general is teaching yourself to see things. Well, that's why it's good to make those extra copies and draw mm -hmm. over them because then you've got to practice on where and when those lines start and how, right? Okay. All right. So that would be pushed back under here. Sometimes it helps to put a little shadow in to help kind of make that form start to round out. Especially for how you guys are going to see it since it's done not with shadows. Does that help at all? Okay. So then we've got, you can tell I really like legs because I'm much happier with those than I am with, the, with her... Uh, with her head. Yeah, she's so expressive the way you drew her. I love it. She looks like she wants a treat. Mm. And she's giving you the She probably eyes. was wanting a treat. Please take me to Starbucks. <laughs> I need a puppuccino. I need a puppuccino. Well, what a... <laughs> what? Mm -hmm. All right. Are you laughing at my dog getting a puppuccino? No, I'm yeah. laughing at Amanda. Mm. Okay. So, hopefully, this foreshortening stuff is making a little bit more sense to everybody. Um, again, make copies. Everybody's break, loving it. Break yeah, it down. We're taking notes. Um, somebody wants to see another drawing when she's full grown. She's still growing. Yeah, she's a mom. She is six months now, and this was when she was maybe. Four months. And that's what I said what we love about the Jerry's Live is that people like take notes and then they come back and they show us what they learned in action. And I love it. And that it. makes me happy. Yep. That group is awesome. Plus somebody, I can't, I can't remember who, I, I apologize because I'm drawing and it's hard enough for me to, to talk and chew gum at the same time and walk. But the Renoir thing was, did you guys yeah, see that? Yeah. That was fantastic. I'm, I'm not a fan of Renoir, and some, apparently some people in 2015 picketed and said that Renoir should be taken out, kind of as a joke, but uh, that was fantastic in the museum. That, A, I sprayed coffee everywhere because I started, <laughs> like, could not stop laughing, and then started with the hiccups because that made it even funnier. Okay. All right. Any questions before we go? Here's your chance. I don't think so. I think everybody's just kind of taking notes and. Okay. Well, if people want extra foreshortening stuff and they love Ripley, I can put other pictures in. I don't think they, in the group. Ever they can just about you, puppy pictures. About puppy pictures. They can just just say that we need more Ripley. And, like I'm not going to draw her, but please yes. put all the pictures up. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> yes. She showed it her first specialty this weekend. She was a very good little girl. Such a good girl. How much she weigh? Uh, she weighs 85 pounds right now. Or did on Friday when I took her to the vet to <laughs> see. What? What'd you say? I said, that's how much I weighed in third grade. <laughs> yeah. So. Oh, she's a goofball. All What's right. next week? Well... So, next week, I think is our palette knife painting X thing, isn't it? Let's see. I'm pretty sure that's what we're doing. Everybody said we need we need palette knife stuff, so, to do a painting in it. I've I'm already getting demands for more Ripley. Yeah. yeah demands for more Ripley. Okay. I can make so that happen. So, next week is knife painting demo, a painting using only palette and painting methods. All right. So, yes. So, we will work on that. Uh... I've got one painting that I'm actually in the process of doing that I started working on in my workshop. 
so I can show people that and show them how that was done to get to that point. But we are going to actually see what we can do about in stages having a painting where we can be painting on it, but have it to completion. Because I think that's what they asked for last time, wasn't it? So in other words, I'm going to have a very busy weekend <laughs> this weekend. But that's fine. That'll be fun. So yes, painting with the palette knife, palette painting knives. So that's next week. Any last questions before we go? We all good? Yeah. I will put the pictures of Will, the picture of Will in, uh, in the group, and I can put the picture of Ripley in there as well for people to give a try to. Okay? Yeah. All right. Thanks for tuning in, guys. We really appreciate it. Hopefully you learned something. Don't be afraid to try this. And remember, light lines that, that you don't feel like you need to, you know, you can draw back over and over to correct like I did on that hand or even erase. Don't get so attached to the drawing that you're not willing to alter it. Okay? Because that's how you learn. Not just by plugging along when you know it's wrong. Just stop that. Even just start over if you need to. Because it's, it's, it's all in teaching yourself to see. And if you're going to keep drawing it when you know it's wrong, you're just, again, reinforcing maybe the issues that you had in the past. Bad habits. It, yes. Amy, Amy doesn't like bad habits. <laughs> so, all right. Take care, guys, and we will see you next week.